2024, nuclear reactors helped avoid 2.1 billion tonnes of carbon dioxide emissions. That is enough to wipe out the carbon footprint of the entire global aviation industry nearly twice over. That is according to the World Nuclear Association, who have just released their report called Nuclear Delivers a Record-Breaking Year in Electricity Generation. Well, the author of the report joins us live from London, Dr Jonathan Cobb, Senior Program Lead for Climate World Nuclear Association. And joining us in the studio is Jonathan Fisher, CEO of Cauldron Energy, who is an expert on uranium. Two Jonathans, thank you very much for joining us and appreciate you staying up very early in London this morning for you, Jonathan. So we'll start with you first of all. So it's an in-depth report, but if you don't mind just explaining to us, please, the, uh, the significance of this, because your report revealed in 2024, nuclear reactors supplied more electricity than ever before. Right, so they supplied uh, 2,667 terawatt hours of electricity. And to put that into context, that is enough to provide 9% of the world's uh, electricity need. And one of the most remarkable things has been uh, in Asia, uh, where electricity generation has actually doubled over the last decade, going from 400 terawatt hours to 800 last year. So now representing just under a third of all electricity generation from nuclear. So that's a very rapid growth of uh, nuclear generation in that region. So it's a rapid growth, um, Jonathan, to you. So you're an expert in uranium. You've got the CEO, uh, you're the CEO of Cauldron Energy in Australia. Remind us how much uranium Australia has and your thoughts on the report. So Australia has more uranium than anywhere else in the world um, around... Uh, a third of, of global resources. So we are a, a major player on the world uranium market, but uh, we don't do enough yet and we can do so much more. I think the report is very interesting from an Australian perspective, is that um, if we look back to the, to the election that we just had, we had so much information about saying that nuclear is a dying industry and that it's, it's no longer relevant, there's no growth in it. Well, nuclear's just delivered the largest generation output on record ever. Um, and that's, that's off the, ba the back of primarily uh, Chinese and, and uh, Indian production coming online, even before we have a new, new build coming out of, uh, out of the, the Western world. So a um, lot of growth and very exciting time for nuclear. So, Dr Cobb, why are we seeing such a growth? Because in your report as well, seven reactors connected to the grid in 2024, China, USA, France, UAE, India. We've got 70 currently under construction worldwide. We've got uh, AI... Uh, more people moving into the country and the world, of course. But um, what is the significance of these nuclear reactors? Because, as Jonathan mentioned, uh, we're not really seeing uh, that in favour in Australia. Yes, well, it's a very large amount of uh, new generation that's coming along, I think, for a number of drivers. One is uh, increased requirements for electricity. Over the next 25 years, it's expected that electricity demand worldwide is likely to more than double. So there's just need for more electricity and many governments want that to be clean electricity, which nuclear can provide. Uh, there's also been a strong signal from the World Bank. The World Bank has said that it will start financing nuclear projects and that sent a signal to the whole of the finance sector. Uh, capital markets are, are seeing now that nuclear is something that uh, requires investment, requires financing and they are coming around uh, and wanting to do more in that sector. There's also really strong political will. So. Um, two years ago, 25 countries signed a declaration saying that they wanted to have nuclear generation tripling by 2050. And another six countries have joined, joined since that time. So there really is strong political will uh, for more nuclear generation. And Dr Cobb, um, another announcement this week, which was described as a game-changing moment in your industry, Microsoft mm -hmm. has signed a long-term agreement in... Uh, what your organisation basically says are leaders in securing reliable carbon-free electricity. Talk us through that announcement. So, yes, it's, it's a really good announcement. Microsoft is one of the big tech companies uh, that is really getting involved in nuclear energy. They see the need. They are big investors in clean energy and nuclear is included in that. So Microsoft, Meta, Google are all becoming really good, strong players. And Microsoft has now joined World Nuclear Association, which means that they're working with us and with the rest of the nuclear industry to really see what can be done to improve uh, the way in which nuclear is deployed, 
bringing their expertise, what could be done to streamline regulatory uh, approval processes, uh, what can they do in terms of development of advanced technologies. So I think it's very significant that such large companies uh, such as Microsoft are getting involved in the nuclear industry and see it as part of their commitment to clean energy. And Jonathan Fisher, what do you think of the announcement by Microsoft and do you think Australia is falling behind in the nuclear race? Uh, so I think the Microsoft uh, announcement is fantastic and the benefit of big tech is that they tend to move at a pace quite different to traditional utility um, buyers who, who are slower and, and um, you know, just go along as business as usual. Big tech is used to disruption and they will, they will disrupt the nuclear space and that's how one of the key ways that we see growth really taking off in nuclear is on the back of these new, new players coming into the market. Is Australia... Uh, at risk of falling behind, Janie, we're already behind. Um, we need to catch up. All right, there was obviously the, the debate leading into the federal election and um, the coalition mm. failed, for want of a better word. Yep. But the Prime Minister is going to be releasing a new series of emission targets following a trip to New York for Climate Week. We heard um, the Resource Minister, Madeleine King, uh, speaking to the ABC yesterday, saying that we have the world's best resources sector. Um, what are you reading with this? Because... The Minister for Resources also said we need them, uh, the resources for our green future, but also for our defence applications. If we have so much uranium, we've spoken about this at the mm. uh, the summit that you had at the university recently, yeah. that Australia could play a significant role in lowering our emissions without even building nuclear reactors. Correct. Co correct. We, we can export green energy, but not in the form of green hydrogen necessarily, but in the form of uranium. And in, interestingly, actually, the WA government, where there is currently a ban on uranium mining, has just released a parliamentary inquiry into how WA can play a role in the global decarbonisation context, and they are specifically looking at the, the opportunities to export green fuel, and that includes uranium. All right, we've got to wrap it up. But uh, Dr Cobb, just quickly, uh, what's your reaction on, on Australia and where we stand with uh, uranium nuclear energy? Well, as a, one of the major exporters of uranium, Australia is playing a really big part in the nuclear industry today. And as the nuclear industry grows, uh, that demand for uranium is going to increase as well. So we can provide the fuel for all these reactors. But certainly I think that the benefits that you can get from having your own nuclear energy program, the clean energy, the jobs that are created through a nuclear build program and operating those reactors, and the improvements in reliability and security of electricity supplies, uh, it's a reason why I think uh, Australia should be joining all those other countries that are now supporting nuclear. Dr Jonathan Cobb, Jonathan Fisher, thank you both so much. Thanks, Janie.